guys, what's up? It's Red back again with another video. It's going to be a different type of video just due to because guess what? I quit. So in the other videos that I was talking to you guys about this security company and how it's doing too much and they was just asking too much of me and the boss kept talking to me and like basically trying to tell me what I was doing wrong every single day and keep in mind you guys I got hired really fast so I'm just going to do a little recap if you guys want to know more about the information or about the security company and what I went through make sure you guys go watch my vlogs because I have two security vlogs that you guys can go watch and understand what I was talking about. Basically, what happened was I applied on Indeed for the security job, right, you guys? And as soon as I went and applied for the security job on Indeed, they called me the same day. He said, okay, well, you know, you can get your security license and you can do this online and you can get it and da da da, -da and da, da, da. so boom I got my security license he sent me a site which I'm gonna show you guys through all the messages okay I'm gonna go all the way up to the first one so the first day you guys that he called me the first day that he called me and he said um you know if you get your certificate you can work the same day or you can work tomorrow so boom he already sent me like the address this is the address of stuff and then he said, he, I asked how much did he get paid. He said $12 an hour. He said um, all this other stuff. Um, then he asked what nights was I interested in. I told him what nights. And then boom, that same night he wanted me to work. After I got my security um, certificate, I went up there. And the same day he was like, okay, you're gonna, I had to fill out so much paperwork, you guys. And he did not background check me and he did not um, drug test me, which was sketchy. That's how I should have known that it was a bad company from the jump and that they was desperate and that they was probably doing too much. And, you know, you guys got to be wary of companies that people quit a lot. You know what I'm saying? If somebody is quitting the job, people are quitting the job like crazy. That means the job is probably not for you. It's probably a um, horrible ass job and nobody wants to deal with that. And when I saw the reviews and I saw it was rated a 1.0. I, that kind of made me like be like, okay, I'm not the only one that's sitting over here realizing that this is an unprofessional ass company. You know what I mean? So, so, so he wanted me to work there before I even got my uniform, you guys, which was which was kind of weird. So as soon as I got my certificate, which I got it that same day, um, it was thirty dollars. I had to go through an online course. It took about an hour to do, and after that, that's whenever. Uh, he, he wanted, well, that's whenever I told you guys I met up with him or whatever. I signed all these papers. He helped me get my security license. That's cool. I appreciate you for that, boo. But everything else, no. That security company is downright bad. And I don't mind, you know, speaking up. Because at the end of the day, nobody wants to work for a place that doesn't background check people, does not train them the right way. And does not want better for their security officers and want them to have a good life as well. Like, he don't know my situation. I could be a person, you know, having five kids. I could be in college. I could be strung out. I could be, you know, on the side of the road or barely passing by on rent. All types of stuff. And the fact that he was playing with my money, that just... It just makes it be like, okay, you're going to have to calm down a little bit. After all that, um, that's whenever he gave me $20. That's where I kind of figured that it was unprofessional. When he gave me $20, you guys, yeah, $20. And he was like, go get a strobe light from Walmart. And I keep in mind, he did not tell me anything. He wasn't telling me what to do. He wasn't telling me, like, anything anything about you know the locations he wasn't he just told me the address and to just be there at that time he didn't tell me what to do with my car he didn't tell me oh you can go walk around outside oh the gate code is this the gate code is that because i was patrolling apartments you guys i didn't know the gate code towards none of these apartments and i was going to like 10 different apartments all the time like literally so it was it was crazy and boom i went to go get a strobe light the next day and I was just like, that dude is, the boss was fucked up because he don't even know if my car is a good working car. 
He wasn't telling me, oh, you know, this job requires you to stay in your car the whole time. If I knew that, I would have not did so much with this company. I wouldn't have even worked this much because I worked a lot. And keep in mind, you guys, this day was a 30, 35 minute drive every day. Like there and back was probably an hour and a waste of my gas. Like I'm spending 40 miles on gas to get there and come back. Then I'm spending extra money just by driving around in different apartments or driving around the location, making sure everything's okay. And I did not get compensated for driving to different apartment complexes or even driving around at the apartment. The only thing I got paid for was just being there, which I, in my opinion, is messed up because most security places, if you are gonna drive around and stuff like that, especially in your own vehicle, they give you a gas card. I used to work at another security company, you guys. It's my third security company that I worked at. My other ones, they had gas cards for people. So if you needed it that bad, you could tell the manager and he was like, oh, just use the gas card, but fill up your car and that's it. You feel me? Like, even with other stuff too, like, they had, I had, a, I worked at another company where, guys, they had their own security card. Like, if you're going to do that, get your own security card. And then he told me, like, when I went there, he was like, oh, you know, you're going to have to go pick up uniforms tomorrow and I'm going to give you um, a security magnet on the side. So that messed me up because he never gave me nothing related to security wise. He didn't give me shit. He wasn't telling me shit. So that is another reason why we have problems along the road because he wasn't telling me that anything. Like if you was to hire somebody, why aren't you gonna tell them, oh, this job pretends you to be in your car. Is your car well working? Is your car good maintenance? Something like that. Like why wouldn't you ask if somebody's car okay? Like my car could be a whoopty. It could barely be working and you're going to hire somebody and they probably barely working. Like, they just, just sound stupid. People just sound and look freaking stupid. After that, um, I was there for about 30 minutes. Keep in mind, you guys, for me to go up there, I thought it was going to be an interview, but it wasn't even an interview. It was just him screening me, like, basically putting me through the process and getting me into the system. And then he gave me a bunch of papers, you guys, like a whole bunch of papers about the security license and about you know a website that you got to go on to fill out your daily reports no you don't do it on a sheet of paper and then also they gave me a website to clock in and supposedly the fucking app and website does not even work so that just pissed me off too because i was just like you're so unprofessional why are y'all wasting paper and why are you saying that there's an app you gotta do this you gotta do that you ain't gotta do none of that shit none of that sitting over here and he was calling me like crazy like nigga was trying like the boss was calling me every single day you guys and i'm the type of person where it's understandable but i feel like you should only call your employee if they gotta go in for work or if you have a problem if it's something small like hey can you come in today you should text that you do not have to call somebody on it and that's what he was doing this this dude was calling me like crazy he was calling me to tell me to pick up my uniforms he was calling me to tell him to go to an interview with him he was calling me to make sure um, I was at the apartments each night. Like, you do not have to call me. Like, that shit is weird. That shit is weird. And then he want to have the audacity to go off on me because I'm texting him. He said, don't text me because uh, these matters are not serious. The only thing I texted him, you guys, was, oh, I might not be able to make it in. Or I might be like, oh, you know, I might not be able. Or I'll be like, can I take another shift this week? Or something like that. That's the only time that I'll sit there and text him, like, or I'll just be like, oh, I can't pick up your call because it's such and such. This dude was blowing everything out of proportion, and I did not like it. And he was just doing too much, and he tried to make himself seem so professional, and he was not professional, you guys. And you know what the sad part is? After that last vlog, you guys, that if you guys watched it, the security vlog, he actually called me. And I'm going to tell you guys what he said once I get down to it. I'm saying this stuff in order, okay, in a story order. This is what really happened in, or in order. I'm not going to just say a whole bunch of stuff and be like, oh, this happened, like, you know, last. And I said it first. Like, no. I'm not going to say all that just to get some hype on this video. I'm not going to say that just to get y'all keep watching. None of that shit is real, authentic raw uncut security life okay <laughs> so yeah after i got my shirts or whatever i had a problem with even getting my shirts you guys it was about 35 minutes away did not get paid for going to go pick up my shirts either so boom i go pick up my shirts 
And the ladies that's there, they're talking in Spanish, and they're constantly looking at me. They're side eyeing me because they don't believe that I I got the I need the um, uniforms. I guess because I look young or something. So they talking crap about me in Spanish because they already pulled out the uniform. They just didn't want to give it to me. So they're talking amongst themselves, and they keep pointing at my name because my name is on the uniforms. And they're like da 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 like they was just. They was just looking like, they was doing hand movements like this and, you know, looking at me multiple times after they said something like this. I could tell they was, they was talking about me. I'm not racist. I don't care about none of that shit. It's just the principle that I just felt some type of way and I felt the energy. People was being weird and it took me about five minutes of them talking for them to finally give me the uniform. And they asked me two times, is this my name? Is this me? So clearly it had to be something pertaining to that. Another thing with the security company, um, some of the cons, there's a lot of cons within the security company. Um, he told me I would have to go to tell a police officer or go to a different location to go get keys to, um, to go use the bathroom. And I'm just confused because if I'm working at an apartment complex, I should be able to pee at the leasing office or something like that, somewhere nearby, like... I should not have to keep going to a gas station. And keep in mind, you guys, I did work downtown Houston. If you guys don't know about that, it's very um, rare to find gas stations open on the inside late at night. So for me, I had to like literally memorize in my head like which gas stations were open on the inside because it was literally only one gas station open on the inside by the places I was patrolling. So every single other gas station I was going to, they was open but not on the inside. So every single time I had to pee, half the time I either held it or I just had to find a gas station that was open and that took me about 10 to 20 minutes half the time, which was a waste of my fucking break. And that's another thing, he didn't talk about the break, he didn't say how long we could break for. The only thing that we could go on break for is to the bathroom and that is fucked up. So he didn't speak about how long he wants our break to be, what time. He wasn't speaking to us about benefits. There was no employee benefits, so you didn't get no dental, no, um, no retirement, none of that. You didn't get none of that. So that's another reason why I didn't want to work here because the the benefits were not benefiting enough for me. I'm 25 and I'm my own place. I got my own car. You know, I want a family and I want to grow and get a house and et cetera, et cetera. And me being at this job is not going to help. It's not going to help. This is this is what people in high school get. You feel me? I'm not in high school. Dude didn't even ask me about my situation. Nothing. He didn't care enough. And then he had the audacity to say, oh, your birthday just passed. Happy birthday. Like, he was being dry, nice to me for, for a reason. Because he wanted me to work there. Nothing else. So that is sick to me. And then um, I was working there, you guys, for about, I'd say, three or four days. And after that, he was saying that my daily activity reports, like, basically, if you guys don't know what that is, is basically where you have to write down what you're doing every single hour when it comes to security so if you're driving around looking at apartments you got to say driving around looking at the apartments i don't see anything yada 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 and he was telling me that i need to like basically write paragraphs like every 10 minutes i have to say what i'm doing and if you guys are security officers watching this you know damn well you're not supposed to write every 10 minutes what you're doing at the most i'll say every 30 minutes maybe every hour but not every 10 minutes and I did not like that like I'm not I'm I'm not a fucking book Arthur I'm not gonna sit here and once I get there they want me to put seven okay like let's say you guys are from working at 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. shift 7 p.m. I just got to the building 705 I started patrolling the building 715 I'm done patrolling the building now I'm going to the front gate 730 still at the front gate 745 I start patrolling again like I'm sorry but it's just it's it's not giving it's not giving i understand to tell to write about what you're doing but if you're repeat like basically it's going to be a repeated cycle on your dar like it's just gonna be the same shit over and over again so me personally i feel like the only the only thing that you should be writing down is it once you start patrolling around the area so whether it's in your car or whether you're patrolling on foot you could be like oh you know i patrolled at this time and I came back at this time, and that's it. Other than that, I shouldn't have to say what time I leave, what time I come back. You know, I understand the break times too, but I shouldn't write something on the paper every 10 minutes. That's what I'm saying. I feel like every 30 minutes is fine, and you know, or every hour is fine. Like, I shouldn't have to be doing this, all that shit. I'm not getting paid that much to be 
sitting over here trying to patrol the area two times per hour. I'm not getting paid for the gas. Uh, and hot as hell in my car because you can't sit here and blow air in your car a full eight hours, you guys. Then you're not going to want to have your car on because if not, if your car is just stalling, your car is eventually going to get fucked up. So it was a whole bunch of shit to that. And he asked me what did I want part-time or full-time. I told him part-time. And he started to put me full-time, which is like six days a week. So that was what was going on. And I told him I would tell him if I don't have, if I can't work a certain day. And he would get mad because I wouldn't tell him a week in advance. And I told him, I'm like, okay, well, I'm working part-time. So I already told you that some days I might not be able to work. And, of course, people are not going to know. Like, let's say if you guys get sick randomly. You're not going to know a week ahead that you're going to get sick. So he would get mad about a lot of stuff because I wouldn't tell him a week before that I needed to, you know, be off or whatever. And I'm just like, you should already knew that if I said it was part-time. I'm not really trying to work six or seven days a week. It's cool every once in a while, but, you know, some days I don't want to go to work. And it's, it's truthful. I'm being as truth and as blunt as I want to be. And I don't care what anybody has to say. At the end of the day, it's my life. It's my body. If I, feel, if I personally am really, really tired and I don't want to go, that's what I'm fucking going to do. I'm not going to try to call out the work, you know, call off every single week or every single day. But it's the principle that every once in a while, like, yeah, I want my own fucking breaks. I really originally supposed to work three or four days a week. I'm not supposed to be working five, six, seven days a week. And that's what he didn't understand. So, and then that's another thing. Like, he would text me the schedule every single week, every single Sunday. And I didn't like that either. Because before he would even make the schedule, he wouldn't even text me, hey, um, what days are you, like, as a boss, you should be asking me since I'm part-time. Like, hey, what days are you not available for this week so I can do the schedule? That's how you're supposed to ask. And I even told him what days I don't be wanting to work. I told him I don't want to work Sundays and Fridays. And niggas still had me working Fridays and Sundays. The only days, you guys, I had off was Mondays uh, and Sundays. And that was fucked up to me because I'm like, bro, I don't want Sundays and Mondays off. Those are the slow days. Those are the most easiest days to work. I hate Saturdays. I hate working them days just because I don't like dealing with too many people, too much ruckus, too much energy i don't like all that he was just dragging it at this point again you guys because he was talking about i need to fix my daily reports again then i told him that um my car was stopped because my car stopped um two times and the first time i had to take it to the shop and it took a week for it to come out the second time it only took two days for it to come out the shop and um he was upset about that too but that's real life problems like like i said you're supposed to ask somebody, like, hey, is your car stable enough to be doing this all night? Like, if I knew, like I said, you guys, I wouldn't have put myself in a position to that. I would have got a different security job. I would have just had this as temporary. And then I got, like, a big message right here. And basically, if you guys can't read that, it says the client has canceled service at the properties. I have to meet with them on Monday to decide what we're going to do. So, basically, I was off for a whole week because um, the properties that my security company covers is literally just one like it's one one property name but it's like they patrol like i think it's like 20 properties and that's it so they don't have a lot of properties you know that they can send security officers to that's what i'm saying and they don't have like a lot of good properties like all these properties are apartments they were expensive apartments i'm not gonna lie but they was in sketchy ass areas and places and these people just was too friendly with me, like, where they wanted to walk up to the security guard, which is weird and awkward. Like, chill out. But, yeah, like, you guys, this was the most craziest experiences I've ever had in my life at this security place. So, I thought I was, you know, basically out of a job because that's what happened at my second security place. I did not get fired. It's just um, the building that I was working at, they canceled their contract with the, the security company. So my manager was like, hey, they canceled, um, you know, they canceled for the property or whatever. Um, and that was the only property that my old security company actually had. So once that property canceled it with them, um, there was no longer a security company. They was like, hey, um, we're sorry, but we're going to have to let y'all go because we don't have any other properties for security officers. That was the only property that we had. And, you know... They don't want to do business with us no more. And that's what just happened at this security company, you guys. So it was a re-fucking run. It was a rerun. Like, I was scared for my life. I was like, damn, so I'm not going to have a job no more just because the security uh, company 
got their fucking um, contract, you know, done for because of the other property. Then he tried to get me to train people. He was like, hey, this new, D, this new dude needs help with daily reports. Can you tell him what to write and how to write it? And I'm sitting over here mad as hell, you guys, because I didn't have no help. When I first started working there, he did not ask no security guard to help me with my daily reports or to help me log in or to help me, um, you know, learn stuff about this job. Like, he literally asked me. He said, hey, please call officer blah, blah, blah when you arrive on site. As you guys see, that's the number right there. Uh, when you arrive on site, he needs assistance in completing and submitting his DARs. Please do a full property assessment when you first arrive to the sites and each time you leave. Check for damages, especially when you leave at, your end the, at the end of your shift. And that was messed up because, um, like I said, he didn't sit there and tell me anything. How are you going to sit here and patrol a fucking area, you guys, and you don't get out your car? All these security officers, I've seen all the other ones because I had to go to a different location. And he told the officer to um, show me because, like, at one of the properties that the security company um, patrols, um, something caught on fire, so he showed me where the fire um, apartment was and for me to just sit there all day and just watch it So I was like cool, you know But um, the other security officer he is in a old ass cop car with tinted windows with a patrol light at the top And he got security magnet then the other officer is in a big ass white truck and he got tinted windows He got a strobe light at the front of his car and then he got um a security magnet on the side of his car so I'm sitting over here mad because I saw the other security officers you know a couple of days before this on all that type of shit and they have fucking security magnets why am I the only one that doesn't have security magnets and why am I the only one not getting trained by anybody else and then I had to realize how many officers there were because I already saw some of them there's only four officers including me now there's five because they just hired somebody else supposedly he took my spot the one we're gonna get into that a little bit later but yeah that shit was fucking crazy. So then this situation happened to where um, he sat there and he called me on the phone and he was like, you need to stop. Um, no, I texted him. No, I went to work one day because uh, I didn't go to work one day because I was tired. So I told him, you know, my car got towed or whatever, and I'm going to come back to work in a couple of days. So, boom, I went to work two days later. And he was like, oh, well, you didn't tell, uh, I texted him at 2 a.m. in the morning, and I was like, hey, I'm at work, um, just to let you know. And the only reason why I texted him was because I saw another security officer at the location that I was supposed to be patrolling. So he told me, oh, you're supposed to be here too? I was like, yeah. So boom, that's whenever, um, he called me, and he was like, two security officers were not supposed to be working there that night. And he was like, you did not tell me that your car was out the shop and I did text him that my car was out the shop I told him that before I even went to the security place and he did not reply so that was partially my fault I guess because I didn't tell him ahead of time how long it's gonna take for my car to be out the shop but you know I was tired I didn't feel like going to work that day so um, I was just dealing with a whole bunch of yada 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 eventually um, he was like saying, I'm not trying to be mean on the phone or nothing like that, but this is a business. Like, clearly, I don't know what, what job you had before or if you even had a job before, but this is not how you act. And he was like, you're not supposed to be texting me at 2 a.m. in the morning. Keep in mind, you guys, I work overnight. So even if I was to text my boss, the only reason why I texted him was because I saw the other security officer and I was like, that never happened before. Usually, I work by myself. So that's why I texted him to make sure that he knew I was there. So that way, if I wasn't supposed to be there, he was going to text and reply to me, and then he didn't. He called me like a day later, like I said, you guys, and he told me all that, and he was like, um, you know, this is not professional at all. We're supposed to be professional. And now, you know, the property managers are coming at me saying that they're not going to pay two security guards. And he was like, so I don't know what you're going to do, but I'm not paying you. I'm not paying you for going up there. Like, you, you shouldn't have went up there. And I was like, well, I told you that my car was good. And then I told him, I was like, um, my car, I didn't tell you that my car was going to be in the shop for a whole week. Partially it's his fault because why would you automatically have somebody cover my shift for a whole week? He had somebody cover my shift, you guys, for this week and next week. 
not 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 right now right now but i'm saying like i said in the text message he was like i got your shift covered this week and next week and i was pissed because i was like bro my car don't take two weeks to get in and out the shop what the fuck is this nigga doing so my friends was telling me the same thing they was like oh bro he got it out for you because if your car is in the shop at the most he could like have like you know four or five days off maybe or three at the most but not no two weeks like bitch i got shit to pay I got shit to pay you guys. Like, no. That's why I said he did not care about what I had going on. He was only caring about himself and, and getting his bag. He did not care about anybody else getting his bag. So, would I go back to this company? No. Would I suggest this company to anybody? No. And he didn't even ask for my vehicle registration, my vehicle insurance. He didn't even ask how my vehicle looked like. Nothing. He did not care about none of that. So... When he said all that on the phone, he was just going off on me. He was like, oh, your daily reports are still too short. You got to, you know, do brief reports every 10 minutes. And I'm just sitting over here like, bitch, I'm not getting paid for that. Maybe if I was getting paid $15 an hour, then yeah. Then yeah, you feel me? I would. But bitch, I'm getting paid 12 Then And um, he told me, I told him I could work. Uh, I texted him and I told him I could work Friday and Saturday, which was two days after that situation had happened. And he told me, um, okay, you can work them two days. And then after he told me, now keep in mind, you guys, I had to ask him, could I work them two days before he got on the phone with me and tried to go off on me. So for him to sit there and say that I never had a job before or, like, he could tell, like, something, 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 bitch, get the fuck away from me. You don't know how to do a business, clearly. If you got to sit here and call your employee every fucking day, then you're going to get mad when they text you. Like, get the fuck on with that dry ass bullshit. Then I work overnight. How else? You think I'm supposed to text you and call you during the day? He said, oh, you have to text and call me during business hours. Bitch, this nigga texts me, you guys, at 9, 10 p.m. at night. How you gonna sit there and tell somebody, oh, text me during business hours, but you texting somebody at 9, 10 p.m. at night? It don't make no goddamn sense. And then, number two, how if I work overnight? So if there's a problem, you telling me I can't even text you or call you? That's fucked up. And then I be sleep during the day. I get off at like 6 a.m., you guys. So it's like at 6 a.m., don't you think I'm going to be sleep? Do you think I'm going to be sleep the rest of the day? Like, you talking about text and call during business hours. So you want me to stay up for your ass? No. I would never fucking work here ever again in my life. And then he asked, did I work? I said, no, I did not work last night. He said, why didn't you work? I said, you said I wasn't going to be on the schedule until next week. He said, I clearly stated you to work Friday and Saturday. I will follow up with you for next week's schedule and then starts today. I put okay. And then I texted him, you guys, Tuesday, May 31st. Okay, it's June 8th. So it's been like a week. I said, hello. I was wondering about the schedule. Keep in mind, you guys, it's already been two weeks. Nigga did not reply to me. So clearly, I'm not going to say I'm fired, but I'm let go. But I was going to quit anyways. Like, I told you guys in the other video, I was going to quit after he fucking... Well, I don't. I didn't catch it on camera, which I wish I did. I wish I caught the camera and was on the, on the camera while I was on the phone. But, you guys, I'm just telling y'all, I was going to quit regardless after he went off on me on that bullshit. Because I ain't never heard of an employer sit there and try to tell me, have you had a job before? Like, clearly you haven't worked anywhere. Like etc etc like going hard and deep into the shit and it's like you didn't train anybody so how can you sit there and get mad at about anything and you didn't tell anybody when is their break you know uh how many minutes or hours they can take their break you're not telling nobody nothing about their vehicle what to do with it what to do inside the apartment he's just sending you a location and telling you to go there like you don't even know what to do so if you guys are not really a security officer you're gonna go there and you're gonna be like what the fuck do i do you feel me like, m the main part that I was doing was I was sitting outside the gate. Well, no, I wasn't sitting outside the gate. At first, you guys, I was going inside the gate and going around every 30 minutes. And then he told me that I didn't have to do all that. He said, you can sit outside the gate and just check every once in a while. So that's what I was doing. And then they said I wasn't doing enough. So it's like, it's giving, like, they don't, they don't know what the fuck they're doing. They don't know what the fuck they're saying. So they're just going along with the flow. And I'm happy I'm out of that situation because I do not want to go back and forth with an unprofessional-ass dude that barely got security guards. You barely got a company running. Like, I honestly don't care. And then he don't even got his own building. You feel me? You live in a suite on the 13th floor.
Nobody cares. I'm over it, and I hope you guys are too. Just be wary, you guys, of what security places y'all apply for and, you know, all that other stuff because these people are crazy, and they want to sit here and blame you for your work ethic or, you know, anything wrong that you do, but it's like how if you're not trying to tell somebody so they can get better. You know, and then instead of sitting over here bullying somebody or making fun of them, why aren't you helping them as as a team member or as a boss? Like, what is wrong with you? So, yeah. If you guys like this video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. That's really it for my security job. Like I said, like I said guys, like I said, you guys, I kind of left. I did not go them other two days after that phone call just because I was like, fuck it, bro. I don't really give a fuck. Like, at the end of the day, you guys, it is what it is. People going to do what they're going to do. Same with jobs, so I just realized that this job was not compatible with me and I would rather avoid it and not go anymore. And if that's another thing, like if I was fired or anything like that, why they don't want their uniform back? You don't want your uniform back? Oh, okay. That's really about it, you guys. I only got paid like three times by them because they get paid, I get paid every two weeks by them. So that's another con, you get paid every two weeks. Um, you know, like I said, no benefits, no employee benefits. You barely get to talk to anybody. You did not get trained. There's no fucking websites or nothing. You gotta do, you gotta figure out everything on your own in general. And then you're wasting your own gas, your time, and your energy, and your space. As you guys, um, I'm gonna be a security guard. I'm not, you know, trying to tell y'all not to do it. Just be wary about the job that y'all do, pick and choose. Me, personally, I will probably never want to work in an apartment complex as a security guard ever again and if I do I really need the money but other than that uh, that's a no for me unless they update or I find a, a better you know security place then maybe but yeah bye you guys